Hello everyone, Reza here. In this video, I will show you how we can customize the SharePoint document library forms experience leveraging Power Apps. We will expand the layout of the forms experience, showcase a preview of the document, connect the document library to a related task list, create a link directly to the version history for that specific document, showcase information inside live maps, and a lot more. So let's check it out in action. I will first create a document library. I will give my library a name and click create. I will create a few columns for my document library. Choice. I've added three choices. Name of my column is contract type. I'll click save. Create another choice column. Status with the following choices. I'll default the status of any document that comes into new. Create a text column called customer name and a date column. I'll call this contract date. Now, if I was to upload any document into this document library, the way for a user to get to the properties of this document is they have to select the document. They can open the details pane and update the properties here one by one, or they could click on edit all, and this will open the SharePoint form for a document library. And this is the form that we want to customize and extend using Power Apps. For the document library, we have the option right here called Power Apps. And here we will select Customize Forms. This is different than a standalone Power App that you connect to a document library. And the difference is that this form would be the default form behavior that would open for that document library if I customize and publish it using Power Apps. The Power App Studio experience lights up. We have a screen with a form control that is connected to our document library and has the columns that we created in here. We have the ability here to go and add additional columns, remove columns, or reorder these columns. The Power Apps customized form has the dimensions here that looks like a mobile experience. If we head over to settings and go to display, this showcases how the app would light up inside the document library experience. If you need additional real estate, we can just go ahead and change the orientation here to landscape. Now, if I go ahead and apply this, it gives us a preview of how the experience would look like in SharePoint. At the same time, if we look at our screen experience now, we have a lot more real estate to play with. First, I will go and insert a label control to create a header experience for this form. For the text property of this label, I would like to plug in the name of the document that the user has uploaded. Now in the tree view, we have a special object here called SharePoint integration. This is a key object that we get when we customize our document library form experiences leveraging Power Apps. This gives us the context of the document that was selected. So if I need the name of the document, I can simply leverage SharePoint integration object dot selected dot name. If we look at the form experience that was pre-created for us, the data source is contracts. And the item property here is the selected integration object form control. Since I have more real estate to play with, I will change the number of columns that's being displayed here from one to two. And I can squeeze the form control here on the left hand side. I also have the ability to change the sizes of these data cards. So if I want the title column to span the entire first row, I can just expand that. Now I'm going to create different sections in this form. I've gone ahead and added a very simple button control made the edges curved by adding a border radius and gave the text for this button to properties. And this is a non-clickable button. So I've set the display mode as view. Each of these data cards are related to columns in my data source. If I would like to make changes to the behavior of those columns, I can do that by unlocking the data card. 
and changing the properties. So let's change the required field property of the title column to true. So the user needs to enter this value when they come to the edit experience of the form. If in my document library, the column was set to mandatory, it would automatically show up here as mandatory. I can reposition the cards by literally just selecting them and drag and drop them. Now, apart from showcasing the properties, I would also like to showcase a preview of that document. Once again, I've created a button and I've added a rectangle shape that has that border that creates that sectionated experience. And in this, I would like to show a preview of the selected document. We will go and insert an image control, position it in the section. For the image property, we will leverage the SharePoint integration object dot selected dot there's a property called thumbnail that gives you the thumbnail image dot you can pick the image size. I will pick large. For this image control, I will give it a light background color. So here's a preview of that document in action. Now with a standard SharePoint document library form, it will always showcase data for that library itself. But what if I want to expand this? I want to bring in data from other data sources, or in this case, give the ability to the user to add related tasks or checklist items associated with this document. So to connect to other data sources or other lists or libraries, on the left-hand navigation, we can go to data. We can see our doc library connected. Here, I will add a related checklist or a task list that I will create in SharePoint. So back to that same SharePoint site, I will go to new and create a list, select a blank list. I will call this checklist and create. I will add a column of type choice, status. I have provided three choices. By default, status would be open. And to relate my document library with my checklist, I can use the lookup column, but I will keep it extremely simple here. I will add a single line of text column. I will call this doc ID, the type. I will change this to number and click save. Back to my Power App Studio experience. Go to add data, search for the SharePoint connector, add a connection or pick an existing connection. You can enter your site URL and connect or pick from your recent sites. I'll pick this one. Then I will select my list and click connect. Once again, I've created a section experience. I need to create that form so the user can add checklist items. I'll go to insert and select the edit form experience. Position the form in here. The data source will be checklist. This should go and add those fields. The document ID should be associated with the ID of the current document that is selected. So for this data card, we'll go to advanced. We are making changes. So I will unlock the card, go to the default property of the card and change this with SharePoint integration object dot selected list item ID. We will go ahead and set its visibility here to false. So it's there, it's gonna be set, but the user won't know about it. The attachment, I'm going to delete this data card. I need to provide a save button or an icon so the user can save the data. I can go to insert, go to icons, pick the save icon. I have positioned the icon in the header section. And when the user selects this, our formula would be submit form and then enter the name of this form. I have renamed this to checklist form. So when the user clicks on the save button, I need to submit that form, which is my checklist form. For this form control, the default mode, I will change this to form mode dot new. So the user can create new records in here. I have also inserted a plus icon on select of this. I want that form to be set in new mode. So new mode, my form control. So this will allow the user to keep adding records into this form control. 
Now, all of these checklist items or tasks that are being created related to this document, I would like to showcase that information inside a gallery in Power Apps. Once again, added a section, I will go and insert a gallery control. I'll pick the vertical gallery experience, position it in here. The data source would be checklist. For the layout, pick title. I will edit the template of this gallery. Reduce the height, this icon. When the user selects this, I would like to show that data in this form control. I will use the edit form function and pick my checklist form. At the same time, for the form control, there's a property called item. I will set this to my gallery control, which I renamed to checklist gallery dot selected. In this gallery, I have a label control that will showcase the title of that checklist item. And I also want to show the status. So I'll just copy this status dot value since it's a choice column. For my gallery control, we have a property called template fill. I will change this to if checklist form dot mode is equal to edit and this item dot is selected. So if the user selects an item in this checklist info gallery and they click on this icon, it will set the mode of the form to edit. So when it does that, to give a visual indicator to the user that they are visualizing this selected item in this form control, I've given it a different template fill color to provide that indication. When the user clicks on this plus icon, the form mode goes to new. The template fill property then goes back to the original color. Items property of my gallery control is currently showcasing all the data from my checklist. However, I would only like to show those items that are related to this document. So for that, I will write a filter condition, filter my checklist where the column that we created called doc ID is equal to the SharePoint integration object dot selected list item ID. One last thing I would like to add here is a chart experience so the user can look at live how many checklist items are in a particular status. For that, I will go to charts and here I'll pick the column chart experience. This is a composite control. It comprises of additional controls. I would just like to showcase the chart. So I'm going to remove the legend and I will remove the title. For the items property of the chart control, I will plug that formula. And since for this chart control, I need to give it the count of the items, I would have to group my results based on the status. I will use the group by function, group this by my status column, which is a choice column. Now that column does not show up here. So I'll have to take an additional step, which is add columns, I'm going to call this status text and the value here would be this record dot status dot value. Now, when I perform the group by, I can group this by the status text. And the name of this group, I'm going to give it as value. Once I get this response, I need to then count the total number of rows inside this value. So for that, once again, add columns. I will call it total. And let's count the number of rows inside that value column. For my chart control, if I head over to advanced, for the labels, I will leverage status text and my series values would be the total. There's also a property called item color set. I'll just set this as empty so it will randomly add some color to each of those statuses. So this completes all my customizations. I'll go to file, save, and publish this to SharePoint. Once this is done, if I click back to my SharePoint library, if I select the document, I can go to the details, go to edit all. The user can start entering the properties information. All the mandatory columns would have to be filled because if the user tries to save, the Power Apps form will not allow us to do that. 
I've entered some details. I'll set the statuses on hold. I'll create a checklist item, click save. The item gets added to my backend list. I can even update the properties of that item here on the fly. I can create multiple checklist items, click on plus. This will change the mode of the form. I'll click save. Here's my second item. We can see the checklist chart changing on the fly as well. If you look at the backend list, which is my checklist list, here is all the data flowing in. The title, the status, and the doc ID, which is related to the ID of my document. Once I'm done with my changes, I click on save. All that data is logged in the document library properties. Here is an extended version of that document library form customization experience. I'll go and upload a contract. The status is set to new. Using SharePoint column formatting, the link to this column formatting sample will be in the description of this video, so do check it out. In here, I have gone ahead and added this edit icon. When the user selects this, it will directly launch the properties pane. So the user does not have to click on the document, go to the details pane, go to edit all, or go to the three ellipses, go to properties. This is a direct way for the user to get to the properties of the form. So if I just select this, it will directly launch the form experience. Here I have added some additional properties. One of them is leveraging the address input component in Power Apps. This allows me to search for an address. So as I start typing, it will go and look up live addresses and provide me suggestions. So I'm gonna select this address. It's gonna go ahead and plot it right here on a live map experience as well. I have my document preview and I have the ability here to add my checklist items. Here I've added four tasks. Three of them are closed, one is pending. The checklist chart showcases that information. I'll click save and all those properties are logged in one go. I've also provided this icon that links directly to the version history page for this specific document. So if I click this, here is the version history of that document. The URL here calls the versions.aspx page. All we need is the ID of the list or library and the ID of the document. To grab that good for my document library, I will go to the library settings. And right here on the top, between percentage 7B and percentage 7D is the good of my library. And the way I plugged it in my customized form experience is when the user selects this icon, I call the launch function, plugged in that URL here, and for the ID of my document, I leveraged the SharePoint integration object dot selected dot ID. If you enjoyed this video, then do like, comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And thank you so much for watching.